Hi everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Good night, everyone. Welcome to Inspirational Connection, where we connect, share, and talk about all the things that inspire, motivate, encourage, and builds confidence. I am so glad that I am here another time to share, encourage, and uplift everyone. There are times in life when we come to a place of gloom, sadness, uncertainty, and doubt. We often forget who we are and whose we are. In this video tonight, I'm going to uplift and encourage you to stay, to stay in the potter's hand. Thanks for watching ICTV Live. If you don't know who I am and we have never met before, and this is your first time here, I am Samantha of Inspired by Samantha Matthews Brand, and it is a lifestyle brand that promotes inspiration, motivation, encouragement, confidence, and love. So please drop a comment, like, and share this video. Also, if you would like to get more inspirational and motivational videos, consider subscribing to the channel. It's free. And turn on the notification bell so you won't miss an upload or a live stream. We know that positive words are essential to our daily lives. And using words of affirmation are positive ways to command positivity into your life. So the word of affirmation today is, we're gonna go into our jar and we're going to pull it out. And the word of affirmation today, I'm gonna to pull a few out, a lot is falling out. Let's get one. And we just go into the jar here. Um, this is our affirmation jar, we're just gonna pull one out. And today's affirmation is, I am empowered. I am empowered. So you want to look yourself in the mirror and speak it over yourself. You say, I am empowered. You wanna speak it with power and command it throughout your day. Now this jar is unique in that it encourages and it builds your self confidence. And that is what you will get when you use these words of affirmation daily. So be sure to stick around to the end of this video for more inspirational um, products that is available to you, okay? Why do we worry when things happen? Why do we worry when things happen? When we get sick, um, when we fall into sin, when we have disappointments, why do we worry? Well, to answer that question is because it's in our nature. It is in our nature, nature to worry and to um, be afraid and to have fear. That is just in our nature. But the Bible reminded me that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. The topic tonight is stay in the potter's hand stay in the potter's hand doesn't matter what you're going through i will encourage you tonight and inspire you motivate you to stay in the potter's hand you are created in god's image okay know that god makes no mistakes he makes no mistakes at all so to put yourself down for the way that you are or for the things that happen to you or for whatever it is that you're going through, for you to, to complain or worry, that is insulting God's handiwork because he created you the way he wanted you. Everywhere you go, God is with you. 
God will be with you. And everything you do, he knows about it. Before you even do it, he knows about it. And, and any and everything that looks uncommon to you, don't worry about it. Just give it a purpose because we know that God is above everything everything. So it doesn't matter what it is, give it a purpose. Say, this is for this reason. This is what God is doing and know that God is in control and he is above it. The scripture says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me safe the Lord. So no weapon that is formed because weapons will form, but they shall not prosper over you. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. The songwriter says, um, day by day and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. I'm trusting in my father's wise bestowment. I have no cause for worry or for fear. That is a hymn that I love, I love, I love. And just those words alone, it says, trusting in my father's wise bestowment, I have no cause for worry or for fear. The scripture says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. So don't be anxious or worry about anything. Just make the request to God. Make your request known unto God. Pray about it and give thanks. Remember to give thanks. Oftentimes, we forget to thank God and we forget to thank him until he does the work. We just need to give him thanks. We pray about it once and we give him thanks for it or we continue to thank him until he has done the work. It says his peace, his peace will guard your heart and mind fully beyond your understanding. Fully beyond your, and that's when we give him our request and we allow him and we thank him and we allow him to do the work. He will guard your heart and mind fully beyond you. You will never be able to understand why. How am I able to get over this? How am I able to not be fearful and not be doubtful? And once you remember that, we're still in the potter's hand. He's still molding. He's still making us. One of my other scriptures says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear Though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that's right early. It says, be still. Oftentimes we are ready to go. We are ready to move. We're ready to do things. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. And all he wants us to do is to be still. Just be still. He just wants us to be still and know that he is God. He is God. He is the potter. He is the one that is holding this clay in his hands. He is the one that's molding us, that's making us, that created us in his image. In his image, it says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. 
He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy butler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destructions that waste it at noonday. And this, this scripture, um, I had a testimony about this in one of my videos earlier. I'll put a link in the description somewhere here. It says, a thousand shall fall at thy right, that's thy side, and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Psalms 91. You want to know that um, God, God will be your strength. He said he will hide you under his wings, right? He tells us to not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Nothing will harm you. And because we have put our trust and our faith in him, we have put our trust and our faith in him. We have called upon his name. We know his name, so we're able to call upon his name. And whatsoever will happen, God will be with you. Why? Because we have known his name and we have called upon him. The scripture says, because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him and set him on high because he had known my name. If we don't know him, we can't call upon him. We cannot ask him for help. But the scripture, the Bible tells us that because he had set his love upon me, therefore will he deliver us. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. In Luke 10 verse 19, it says, Behold, I give unto you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. It says, trust in him, and lean not on what you know. Lean not on the things that you understand. Do not focus on that. Do not think on those things. You want to trust in him. You have given it to him. You have laid it at his altar. And he tells us to trust in him with all thine heart. Not a little bit of it. All thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. He has given us the, uh, the ability to learn to know so much. He has given us the ability to learn and to know so much. And, but at the same time, he tells us to not lean on our own understanding. Do not lean on our own understanding. Do not do that because he wants us to trust solely, solely in him. There's a song, uh, one of my other favorite songs says, I know my heavenly father knows. The storms that would my way oppose, but he can dry the clouds away and turn my darkness into day. He can drive the clouds away and turn my darkness into day. The chorus says, he knows. He knows. Jeremiah 29, one of my favorite scriptures says, for I know the thoughts I think towards you. You don't know them. I know the thoughts. I created you. I know the thoughts I think towards you, say the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Not of evil. To give you an expected end. And we may have understanding and think our end is a certain way, but God knows our end. He knows my end. And we worry and we focus on how can we make things different? But God knows. He said he knows the thoughts he thinks towards us. And it's of peace. It's of peace and not of evil. 
not of evil. A lot of times we want to give up. We want to give up. We want to give up. We want to let go because we don't understand. We don't know. We don't see it. We don't understand what's going on. But I'm encouraging you tonight to not give up on God. Do not give up on him when you can't hear or see him or know the outcome. Do not give up on him. Um, if you remember the story of the fishermen when they were on the ship and the storm came and God was sleeping and it was dark, the lights was out. Some of God's best work happens when the lights go out. When you don't see it, when you don't know that it's coming, his best works happen when we don't know in the darkness, in the uncertainty, not when it's certain, not when we can understand it, not in comfort, when it's painful, when it's hurtful, when it's too hard to bear, that is when God works. That is when he does his best work. That is when God moves. When we cannot see, we cannot understand, we can't comprehend, we don't know, it's uncertain to us, we are uncomfortable, God works best. So say to yourself, peace, be still to all the thoughts that have been tormenting me, to all the thoughts that have been tormenting me, thinking that God is not in control. God is not listening. God doesn't see. God doesn't hear. God doesn't see my tears. Say, peace be still to all these thoughts that are tormenting me and allowing me to not focus on the promise that God has given to me. John 16 verse 33 said, these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good share for i have overcame overcome the world the jesus walked on earth he overcame and he said it to his disciples be of good share because i have overcome the world when you feel like the weight is the weight of the world is on you and you are faced with storms on every side on every side left right north um east south all over just being thrown at you understand that god is throwing rocks at you to get you back to where you need to be get you back to the place where the potter can mold you, where he can remake you, where he can fix you, where he can clean you up. When those storms are coming, he wants you to come back to him. Understand that your ad, um, adversities is a part of your appointment, a part of your assignment. And you cannot, you will not be able to have a testimony without a test. You will not and you cannot have a testimony if you have not gone through any test. So understand that whatever it is that you're going through, whatever you feel like the potter isn't moving that pot anymore, the clay is not moving, just know that God is still doing the work. And he's giving you this test so that you can have a testimony. The scripture says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest, and this is my favorite part of this scripture, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup will run over. 
surely. Not maybe, right? Not just in case I do good. Not if. Surely, it's sure, it's a definite. His promises are true. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And Psalms 23 is a well-known scripture. I have dissected that thing over and over again. And I, I've come to understand that God is faithful. He is faithful and he is a just God. He is a just God. Nahum um, 1 verse 7 says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. So he knows when you trust him. He knows when you believe in him. He knows, he knows when you have faith in him. He knows when you are allowing him to do the work and you are giving it to him. He knows that. He knows that Isaiah 12 verse 2 says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. He asks us to cast all our cares upon him because he careth for you. Cast all. Casting means you're throwing it on him. You're putting it on him. He said all of it, not some of it, not the ones that you think that you, you, you um, can't handle. All of it, everything cast upon him because he cares for you. He cares for you. His only son he sent on a cross, he allowed to die. God could have called, hey, the scripture says it, 10,000 angels. But he suffered. And, and I always think about this and I always say, the father knew that Jesus was going to go to heaven. He could have just allowed him to die. But he was beaten. He was persecuted. The first um, script that I read when I started this was, he was bruised for our iniquities. And by his stripes, we were healed. He were beaten. He was humiliated. He was sped upon. all of those things he went through for us and he's asking us to cast all of our cares upon him everything everything it doesn't matter what it is everything cast it upon him because he cares for us he cares for us so cast it upon him don't try to fight the battles on your own you don't know how to fight these battles so don't try to fight them on your own allow him to show you that he cares for you and allow him to speak up for you. Allow him to speak. He did it when he was on the cross. He did it when he was on the cross. So allow him to do it. Allow him to speak up for you because he will. He says, beloved, think it not strange, strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange things happen unto you. Think it not strange because he knows about it. He says, rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, Yea, may be, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. So don't worry and think it's a strange thing or what is this going on? It's not strange to him at all. But his glory will be revealed. His glory will be revealed. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning, every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. The faithful God that we all know. The faithful God that we all know. He is faithful and he is just. Psalms 
So I want you to say this with authority. No power or scheme of hell can interrupt or intercept what God has intended to be done in your life, in my life. No power or scheme of hell can interrupt or intercept what God has intended to be done in my life, in your life. And when you say that, remember the scripture that says, be confident, being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the end of Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy 31, six says, be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord God, for the Lord thy God, it is he that had that done that that go with thee. It is he, King James Version, it is he that go with thee. He will not fail nor forsake thee. So when you're feeling like you are not being molded by the potter, I want you to stay in the potter's hands and tell yourself that I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. Psalms 20 says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but I will remember the name of the Lord. Tell yourself that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The scripture on uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, come unto me all ye that are late, that are labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. And the word heavy didn't just say all labor and are, are laden. It said heavy, heavy. You have heavy burdens. He said, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. He's asking you to come to him. Isaiah 40, 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I'm going to read that one again. Um, it's, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And we know that for by grace, in Ephesians 2 verse 8, for by grace we are saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. That is a gift. That is a gift that Jesus gave to us when he died on the cross. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Because it was a gift that was given to us. All he wants us to do is to call on his name. To call on his name. And know that we are still in his hands and for us to stay in the potter's hands. So he can comfort, he can mold he can make you new. He can help you. He can do all the things that he promised you he do. Know that God is about to shift things around for you today. And let things work in your favor. God closes doors no man can open. And God opens doors that no man can shut. And as enemies gather to plan your downfall and setbacks, God will confuse and dismiss them in seven directions. Esther 4 verse 14 says, For, it, for if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. And if you remember the story of Esther, when Mordecai requested for her to do something. And this was the, the scripture um, 
this was in that scripture. It says, but thou and thy father's house shall be restored as if Esther did not go before the king. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? So he was saying to Esther, this is the time that you, who knows that why you're here in this kingdom is not for you to save your family. So it may not look like you're in a position, right? Esther didn't look like she was in a position to go before the king. It may not look that way tonight for you. That you're in a position where you have no, it may, may, you do not have control, right? This position that you're in, you may not have control on the potter's wheel. You're on the wheel and you don't have control because the potter's working. But you were created for such a time as this. And he wants to mold you and make you into a vessel to be used by him. So take courage and know that your voice matters. You matter. And never let anyone tell you anything different. Never let anyone tell you different. The potter, the song says the potter wants to put you back together again. So here we are. The potter wants to put you back together again, and you will be better than you were before. You will be better than you were before. So stay in the potter's hand and allow him to mold you. Allow him to make you better. Allow him to make you new. And then when you have done that, push, push, do not give up. I want you to push because your life depends on it. Push because you control your own destiny. Push because the world needs your sparkle. Push because you are stronger than you know. And push because the potter wants to keep you in his hands and that's all that you can do. That is all that you can do. So I wanna thank you again for watching tonight. And don't forget to leave an inspiration in the comment section below for a list of topics you would like me to talk about. And if you found value in what I've said in this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get more inspirational and motivational videos and hit that notification bell so you won't miss another upload or a video. And for more inspirational, motivational videos, check out my other videos on the screen.